For those of you not in the know, there's been a bit of a swirl of drama surrounding political stuff in gaming lately. The kind of Twitter drama that, for my own sanity, I stay away from unless I feel it might affect something that I actually care about. Because in the end, let's be honest, a lot of political stuff is people egotistically thinking that their views matter because their follower count, when history will never care. But this is one of those cases where, given my last video blowing up about gaming journalists, I feel like I should probably comment on things. My last video on gaming journalists was really an attempt at humor, and frankly I'm shocked and surprised, happily, that so many people enjoyed it. Sadly, this video is very much not as funny, and I kind of apologize for that. So there's been an ongoing drama on the website that proves San Augustine was right about the nature of Original Sin, X.com, between various former and current game developers and journalists, particularly from the place that proves Dante was right about the nature and character of Hell, Kotaku. Now, if you've seen previous critiques I've made of journalists in the gaming space, you'll notice I always leave out people's names. This is important to me because I always want to be clear that it's the person's ideas that I'm criticizing and that I'm not using my YouTube platform or channel as a way to engage in personal attacks. But in this instance, I've got to name the people involved just to actually report on the events. So yesterday, Kotaku senior editor Alyssa Mercante decided to post this to former EverQuest developer SmashJT. Anyway, I found your wife's Facebook and asked what she thinks about the husband of her children harassing women online and laughing when they share that someone they're supporting has been threatening to kill them for weeks. Okay, as usual, we're going to have to do what we did on the last video. It just seems to be a thing with these journalists. Now, by husband of her children, I'm assuming she means father of her children because Otherwise, we're getting into some real weird stuff, ladies and gentlemen. And when she says, share that someone they're supporting has been threatening to kill them for weeks, I think what she means is retweeting threats made towards her. I think that's what she means. But as we as we see with these journalists, there's, there's necessary exegesis you've got to do to start making sense of what they're saying. But I'm going to move forward with the rest of the video, assuming that I understand the ideas she's trying to convey. Now, I want to make two things clear. Obviously, I don't support Twitter beef because it's literally grown people behaving like children. But this stuff has crossed the line into bizarro world, so I can't, I can't resist. I don't have the self-control. So obviously, going so far out of a Twitter beef when you're in a very public-facing job to stalk someone's wife and start messaging them on Facebook is a pretty extreme measure. So naturally, my mind was like, oh my God, what was this guy doing to deserve this? just to be fair-minded, if anything. So I did a bit of digging, and it wasn't hard to find because she herself posted her own reasoning later on. Apparently, SmashJT had been posting the hashtag, hashtag in Kotaku, calling for the shutdown of the gaming news site, a site that's already undergone a series of changes in large part due to its audience, you know, gamers absolutely despising the place. He also retweeted some insulting tweets aimed at Mercante by some right-wing trolls making VR games featuring the unaliving of various left-wing figures. Really tasteless, but if you've had a proper death threat, that's definitely not one. The combination of a retweet and the hashtag in Kotaku is apparently enough for her to conclude that this is a death threat. As she writes back, quote, you retweeted a man who's been threatening to kill me for weeks with the hashtag in Kotaku. You didn't apologize when I pointed it out to you. Instead, you jokingly replied with your petition to end Kotaku. Definitely something in my book that I wouldn't have done, but I don't think anyone should be using Twitter in the first place. So that kind of really goes without saying. But as somebody that committed probably the most egregious gaming crime of 2023 in the fact that I did not enjoy Baldur's Gate 3, I can tell you that I've received many more credible threats than that for not liking a PC game. My favorite of which was an attempt to dox me with the threat that I was in fireball range, which has got to be the most D&D inspired way to threaten someone I've ever seen. But I think debating what people should and shouldn't retweet is really besides the point in this instance, despite the fact that I don't agree with it. Because none of that can ever be an excuse for off-platform harassment of a person's family. Perhaps most importantly though, she is 100% lying and I can prove this to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that she knows she is lying. Because if I felt someone was credibly threatening me online, the last, and I mean very last thing on earth, I would ever do is stalk their significant other and then tell them. The only people on earth that you should ever be contacting if somehow you need a YouTuber to tell this to you, if you feel legitimately threatened, is to contact law enforcement. And if you do seek out further aggressive contact 
with the person that you're currently in a beef with or who is threatening you, especially their family, you've literally thrown any hope away of law enforcement ever taking you seriously due to your own poor behavior. This is obviously the case of a predator playing the victim because the behavior is not the behavior of a victim, but of an aggressor. Moreover, the idea of ending Kotaku is not a personal attack on anyone. I think the vast, and I mean vast majority of gamers, want the site to shut down. You only need to look at the comment sections of any article covering the ongoing financial difficulties the website faces. Their business model is awful. Generally, I like to confront people's actual points as opposed to accusing them of being grifters. I think far too many people do that on the internet. And it may very well be that many of the people at Kotaku do actually hold the political views they do. In fact, I suspect that's the case. But let's be honest, the website's model for at least the past decade has been largely rage baiting gamers for ad revenue by hiring these bizarre people to write articles that they know will make the vast majority of gamers angry. How can you expect to function as a business like that and also not take the hate that comes along with it? And the parent company, Geo Media, has clearly realized this and is trying to pivot the website in other directions. But back to the point of this video. In the end, when I make videos clowning on journalists, I do it from the perspective of making fun at an industry that frankly I don't have a lot of respect for. I think it's a bunch of overeducated people with fragile egos who look down on normal consumers of media. The reason I like to focus though on this odd relationship between gaming media and gamers is as I've said before in my previous video, which I'll link below, the strangeness of being content creators for an audience that they clearly actively despise. And it's shown in the kind of people they hire and subsequently in the way those people behave online. As a former teacher, I've worked jobs where you're supposed to show a duty of care and a level of responsibility about what you do online or you will lose your job in the old days. I think we'd have held a senior editor at a large publication to higher standards than a YouTuber who's struggling to pull 1,000 views per video. But we are not in that world. So keep it positive, keep it friendly, and I'll see you guys in the next video. We'll be doing something a little bit more fun. Peace.